it's the second part of my stay in sunny Perth, Western Australia's exciting capital city, and there's certainly plenty to do. My day is going to be a busy one, because Perth is no urban jungle. It's an extraordinary nature city. From here, I'll be continuing my adventure in the Margaret River region. Come along with me and let's find out what treasures lie ahead. In 1827, the British naval officer Sir James Stirling came to the Swan River and said it was a paradise. What's incredible about Perth is the sheer variety of the nature experience it provides in the very heart of the city. Kings Park is one of the largest city parks in the world and it's also home to Perth's renowned botanic gardens where you can see more than 3,000 varieties of the state's flora all in one place. Its 400 hectares encompass natural bushland walks, sculpted gardens and it's a haven for natural biological diversity. It's just so tranquil here. It's like a living picture postcard in the heart of a city. From the peace of Kings Park and a 30 minute drive later, I'm in a completely different landscape. So carrying 30 minutes out of Perth and it feels as if we're in a walker's paradise. We have lots of short day walks that offer fantastic short bush experiences, mm -hmm. picnics, our beautiful views and waterfalls, just like, we, just like we're seeing today. And then we also have the iconic Bibbulmun track for the more uh, walking enthusiast, which is a thousand kilometres from Perth all the way down to Albany. Western Australia is known for its beaches. It has a staggering seven and a half thousand miles of coastline. Perth itself has 19 city beaches, all with pristine white sand where you can soak up the 3,000 annual hours of sun. Bursting at the seams as it is with natural beauty, it'll come as no surprise that Perth also has its own paradise island. Rottnest Island is among the most special jewels in Australia's crown. It's owned and run by the state of Western Australia as a protected Class A nature reserve. There are no cars allowed on the island, so this is how you get around. And yes, you do have to wear a helmet. It has a staggering 63 sandy coves. And if you can tear yourself away from the beach, the island also has lots of historical sites to explore, including two lighthouses. The abundance of seagrass meadows and its limestone coral reef cultivate a rich marine wildlife population, making it a great snorkeling spot. And its bays are home to seals, dolphins, turtles, and humpback whales. Oh, and it has some very special inhabitants. Luke, I know they're unbelievably cute, but what else can you tell me about the quokka? Well, quokkas are unique in that they're only found in Western Australia, and we have the biggest population here on Rottnest Island. Lucky you, that's yeah. what I say. How many do you reckon you've got? Uh, there's about eight to 12,000 on Rottnest, and that uh, fluctuates seasonally. Is it true that people try and put them in their bags and take them away on the ferry? It has happened on occasion, but luckily for us, most people are well behaved. Yes, naughty, naughty. Do not take a quokka home with you. Although I can see why you would try. <laughs> Lush parks, tranquil rivers, unique wildlife. There's so much to do in Perth. I've ticked a lot of boxes today, but I feel as if I need Maybe just a sunset over the Indian Ocean to finish things off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.